Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. What if I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but by just adding something wonderful and affordable to it, you can have your skin looking more even, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, and even smaller pores. Well, Regila Hydrating Serum is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It's perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or prepping for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean, beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals and features hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C. This is the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner and moisturizer without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it from Regila's Amazon shop today by clicking the link in the description box. Let the glowing reviews speak for themselves. Reveal your beauty with Regila. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so happy that you're here. Today, I have a beautiful guest, Kara Lee Garrison. She is going to be talking to us today about using our voice, which is such a powerful topic, and you're going to get so much goodness out of this. So I'm just so happy you're here, and I'm so happy you're here too, Kara Lee. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Yeah, so please tell us what is lighting you up right now? Who is Kara Lee? And what is, yeah, what is lighting you up? What are you passionate about right now? Oh, I have so much passion. <laughs> Using your voice is just, it's so important. And it just takes you out of being stuck in your own life mm -hmm. and puts you back in like the spotlight of your own life, which is where we're supposed to be. And when you're not, you feel stuck and you feel depressed and you feel weighed down by life. But when you can just let yourself free, because it's really like a personal choice right mm -hmm. like are you choosing to be stuck are you choosing to it's important to point out that like it doesn't really matter what your circumstances are mm -hmm. that the way that you feel in your own life can be changed just by changing mm -hmm. your mindset yep and isn't that so true that mm -hmm. we are in charge and sometimes it's so hard to hear that especially if you're not in the world of growth and expansion and constantly doing the healing internal work that is required to use your voice. It's hard to hear somebody say like, you can change this, just decide. And so how did you overcome that to be the person that you are? Cause you use your voice to sing, you use your voice in such a powerful way. So that's why I think you're such a perfect person to have this conversation Thank with. Thank you. Well, let me tell you a little about like me and my mm -hmm. story. Um, so I always wanted to be a singer, mm. like from when I was a really little kid. And, but I was always overweight. And so I ended up pursuing opera, mm. which was funny because even though I loved singing opera, I didn't like listening to it. And it wasn't really like, I thought that that was the only place I could belong mm -hmm. because I thought no one else would ever let a fat girl on their stage unless it was opera. And so I pursued opera, even though like in middle school, I was writing my own music. And mm, then wow. at some point I like gave up on that and decided I couldn't do it and started down this other path. And so I was pursuing opera and training and training. And then I auditioned for the school of music when I was 18 and I didn't get in and it like crushed me <laughs> when I put it into perspective now and I go, Oh, okay. This was like a really huge program that they let like four people into mm -hmm. per year. And so me not getting in, like it, I made it mean all these things about mm -hmm. myself. But at the same time, I met my husband and got married. And then we kind of just like had three kids and just life kind of happened. And it was good in a lot of ways, but it also was like, I turned around and I was like, what happened mm -hmm. to me? My husband has actually been disabled for the last decade. All three of my kids are on the autism spectrum. 
I tried to pursue music. Mm. Like I tried because it was in my soul. And I, there was actually a long time when I tried to give it up and I couldn't. And so I tried to pursue it, but it felt like closed door after closed door after closed door, like nothing worked. A decade later, I went back to college because I hadn't finished my degree yet. And I auditioned again for the School of Music. So this was 2008 was the first time that I auditioned at 18. And then 2018, I came back and I auditioned again. And we went through a really awful year, which is, it was a, re- a little bit funny because 2019, the pandemic hit. And I was like, this is a breeze compared to what we went through in 2018. Mm-hmm. We moved from Texas back to Utah with all of our kids who were all special needs. My husband and I both went back to college full time. He was disabled and couldn't work. So even doing college was really, really hard Mm -hmm. for him. Like he couldn't walk across campus. Like he was using a cane and had to rest. And then I had three kids at three different schools. And it was like this really, really stressful time. And all through that, I was training and training and training to audition again. And I was like, I just knew that I was meant to get into this opera program. And that was the reason why everything else had been so hard. Like this was what was gonna make everything worth it. And then I didn't get in again. And it was like, it was so devastating. And I and I began to question just everything, mm-hmm. you know? And you have those like rock bottom moments where you're like, God, where are you? Like this was supposed to be the thing that made all of these horrible, trials worth it Mm. and it felt like he was just gone he didn't care and i was just it was one of those moments where you're just like how do you like pick your feet up and Mm. keep moving Mm -hmm. but i had you know three kids three kids with special needs that desperately needed their mom Mm. you know and so it was it didn't really feel like a choice i just had to you know drag my butt out of bed every morning and keep going and i did that for a while And I wasn't sure what I was going to do because the major that I was in, I hated it. It was was funny because I was studying family studies with an emphasis in sewing. (laughs) And I love sewing, but it was like three classes out of 30 Mm. that were actually sewing. And the rest were like family studies research. And I am a hands-on person and I hated this degree. And I was like, how am I supposed to graduate with this degree and feel like I've accomplished something Mm. when all it means to me is that I failed? And so I actually applied to double major. And by this point, I'm like 12 years into my college career (laughs) because I started in 2008. I completed this this request to double major, which was I didn't meet any of the requirements to double major. You had to have like like they they said on all the forms, like we almost never approve this. Mm. This never happens. And I had over 90 credits like I was ready to graduate. (laughs) And by some miracle, they approved it. And I added another year on to my college career and double majored with an extra degree in theater studies with an emphasis in costume design. And it wasn't music. I still loved it, but it wasn't. There's there's an interesting thing about being a mom with three kids and being a full-time college student and not the kind of college student that sits there on their computer all day long and just study stuff. Like I was hands-on making stuff like surrounded by people like there's something about that that's really empowering that really helps you feel like an individual because motherhood can kind of suck you in and take away your identity Mm -hmm. like especially when like like my kids i'm like i feel like they're never going to grow up right now they are 12 11 and 8 Mm -hmm. and they still need me constantly like we still have therapy after school every single day and it's it's constant hands-on like work. And so it's so easy as a mother to become wrapped up in your child's identity and to forget. Oh, and I guess I should add, uh, so another thing that made that 2018 year, a month before I auditioned for the School of Music for opera and didn't get in, my severely autistic nonverbal seven-year-old was diagnosed with type one diabetes mm-hmm. and almost died. So we had just like thing after thing after thing and it all piled on and led to this devastating news that I, I I felt like it meant the end of music for me like I'm just gonna go sit in the background now and design costumes for people who are 
doing what I should be doing. Like, I should be the one that is center stage, and instead I'm going to sit in the background. And that was really, it was a really hard thing. Yeah. Because I felt like I couldn't break free. Like, I was like, when, when is it going to be my turn to be this person that I always felt mm-hmm. like was in there? But it's always been like blow after blow after blow, like shoving me down. Like, how do I break free of this prison that is kind of my life now? Mm. And so, I, t- you know, I took all these classes and I grew so much. And then I graduated and it was like, okay, now what? What do I do now? I could pursue this degree field. Like I could continue to go sit in the background mm. and do nothing. And I did actually have like a job where I washed the costumes for this show. And I spent like every spare moment I had, like I would drop my kids off at school and then I would go to the theater and I would spend hours mending these costumes that they had torn on stage and like washing. And it was a really high dance show. So these costumes were so sweaty and nasty. It was like indescribable. And I'm like, I went to college to do people's laundry. Like, don't I already do that as a mom? And I was like, I guess this is technically a job in my field, but like, this is not. And while I enjoyed the experience and like being part of like a theater community can be really exciting, it was really like, this is just not what I want for my life. It's more of like the wake, it's more little things that were like burning the fire inside. Like, this is not what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to do bigger and I'm meant mm-hmm. to play bigger. Like you said, I'm meant to be in center stage. This is what I see myself doing. So mm-hmm. how did you overcome that mount, what seems like a mountain of things that happened and then the pandemic on top of the mountain? I know. Like, how did you overcome that to be using your voice? How did you overcome that? Because, and even those mindsets of so many mindsets that were keeping you down and keeping you closed off, like how were you able to open back up after that? Honestly, I had a really incredible coach Mm -hmm. and it was just truly inspiration. I was doing the laundry for this show and this free like workshop came on Facebook and I was like, okay, I'll do this, you know, five day workshop, whatever. It's about releasing your voice and finding your, your soul sound and all those things. And I was like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll watch this. And it was really eye opening. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. When you, when you see that and you're like, you feel it in your soul Mm -hmm. that there's just a connection there and you're like, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is the path that I should be taking. And the problem was that it was like really expensive. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my husband, you know, can't work. He's disabled. And we we were living on SSI and student loans and like bare, like scraping by, like I was donating plasma to try to make ends meet. And it was, it was really brutal. And I'm going, I can't pay for this. Hmm. And so, you know, maybe against my logical better judgment, but definitely aligned with my soul. Yeah. <laughs> I scheduled a call and we, we worked out, she was like so generous and we worked out a price point that I, that was fathomable mm. to me. And this experience like really changed my whole life. Mm. And what I've come to realize is that you can be really, really stuck. And sometimes it just takes an outside perspective and it takes that somebody who's been there, somebody who's been able to step out of their own shell mm. to kind of take you by the hand and lead you. And so I started this class and I worked a lot on healing like past trauma. Like, isn't that where we all have to begin? Like you have to constantly work on yourself. And as you do that, you're able to start living as yourself and start being you. And so the, this class was like, oh, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna make an album. And it was kind of funny. I, I took a songwriting class in college and I didn't know what I was doing. I took like four years of piano when I was eight and then never practiced ever. So I didn't like really consider myself like a musician. Like I don't really play an instrument. And I started the songwriting class and my teacher was a complete tool. Like I learned nothing from him. Like he was awful. But after a year of like, I sang at Christmas and Easter at church and that was it. And that was, that was my singing career was that if they let me, I would sing at church every single week, but it was like, okay, here's Christmas and Easter. That's when you can sing. 
you know, and so I was like, I've got to do something. And so I got into the songwriting class and my very first song that I wrote for this class, I wrote this melody and lyrics, but I didn't know what to do with it. Like I was supposed to have like some kind of background music to it. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't know anything. And so I collaborated with some guy in my class and he wrote this background and he's going, do you have any idea like the complexity mm-hmm. of what you wrote? Like, and I'm going, nope, I literally know nothing. <laughs> and so from then on, I was like, okay, I can't just like rely on people forever. I've got to mm-hmm. be able to know some of this myself. And so I got a Mac, a really cheap old Mac so that I could get GarageBand. Mm-hmm. And then I started teaching myself how to use GarageBand. It's really, if you know anything about music, like I was not using chords. Like I didn't know how to write my melody and then be like, here's the chords. No, I knew nothing. Mm. Like I was like, here's my melody. Maybe this sounds good. Like I know basic notes and that's it. And mm-hmm. so I wrote the rest of my songs for that class like that. And my, my professor literally, like he taught us nothing. Like the only reason I grew in that class was because I wanted to make really amazing. Cause I'm a, I'm a super type A overachiever. Like go, go, go. I'm always going to be the best. Like, I'm like all in. yes. And so I'm like, he gave me an assignment to write a song. This song is going to, you know, knock a soft stop. It's going to blow his mind. Like this is going to be the greatest thing he's ever heard. And my professor, like he listened to my first song and he was like, just cause you're a good singer doesn't mean that you're a good songwriter. And I'm like, at least you said I'm a good singer, I guess, because I've been feeling like I wasn't because I didn't get into school of music a year ago, you know, and I'm going like, what? Like, instead of helping me improve my song, you're just going to give me unhelpful feedback that it took me a while to get over that, get over that feedback. But because I'm really, really driven, (laughs) I like forced myself to grow in this class and wrote all these songs and put background music to them that was It wasn't great. It was really like super mediocre, but having never done anything like it, like it was really a step for me. And so you have to like be really willing to step into the mediocre Mm. and then a little bit better (laughs) mediocre and then a little bit better. And with like maintaining the knowledge that there is more, there is better. Your potential is so much bigger than you can even fathom right now and still like be willing to make it messy and still believe in your work even when it's not as good as it will eventually be yeah and that's that can be really hard and it can be really discouraging and I had a lot of moments where I would write music and my husband would be like yeah I don't love it it's kind of cliche my husband so like I said I have three kids on the autism spectrum he recently realized that he's also on the spectrum so he's very like direct and honest with me which is actually a really good thing because in the end when he's like oh my gosh I love it he loves it like you really know that he's being totally honest because he's told me a lot of times that he just didn't love my music and so that was always like really hard like it really never felt like I would be totally in love with my songs and then I'd get this feedback where like that's not amazing like that's eh, it's kind of it's all right to keep going through the it's all right it's Mm -hmm. all right it's not great but it's all right it was a fine line between like if I pursued opera like I wouldn't be writing my own music I would only be doing stuff other people wrote like I never saw myself writing opera ever I still don't (laughs) and so I started like I was I wrote a little bit of music after the class ended but not a lot because I just felt kind of stuck like like I wasn't progressing and then I started this class and I learned oh hey I have to like write chords with my songs (laughs) like that's a thing And so like learning more of the music theory and I should tell you like I was super resistant Mm. Like I was like I'm as good as I'll ever be Don't tell me otherwise because I will have this like breakdown like it like it was sort of chipping away at my pride Mm. And chipping away at the at my ego and like okay This is good and it's an accomplishment But also it can be so much better Mm. and so I had to learn like chords and keys and like figuring out what key my song was in figuring out the time signature of my songs which I had also never done before like so it wasn't just like go write a song it was write your melody and then find a time signature that fits it 
there were some of the songs that I wrote that had extremely complicated time signatures that I still don't understand. And so my subsequent songs, I've as I write them, I'm like, let's make this easier on myself and make this 4-4 four, four, or 6-8, something that's that my brain can kind of comprehend. But I have one song that's like 7-4 and then it switches to like, not, I don't know, it's like the craziest thing. And it's this like artistic masterpiece, but like technically I still am struggling to wrap my brain around what I wrote. And so combining those two things, like the melodies just come. I mm -hmm. love writing lyrics and melodies. Lyrics are a little harder, but melodies just like come to me. Mm -hmm. And so trying to pair that and, and raise my technical proficiency to match other categories, like like to match my my vocal abilities mm -hmm. and my melody writing. Like I'm still not there either because that technical stuff does not come easy to me. <laughs> like there's the technicals of like chords and timing and all of the like music elements, but then there's also production, which mm -hmm. I've also been learning at the same time. So I kind of like, I graduated from college and then I went into a year of really intense learning yeah. in the area that I wanted to mm -hmm. finally, you know, like for the first time in my life, it was like, oh, like this is super hard. Yeah. This is so hard. But this is where I actually want mm -hmm. to like be learning. So putting and so, your efforts there felt more in alignment and it felt absolutely. more true to you, even though it was so hard. And like you were saying, there was so much resistance in your mind. Uh, of how am I going to wrap my mind around this? What is even coming out of me? What does this even mean? And what do I even do with this? Mm -hmm. But because you were doing something that you're loving and you're passionate about, it sounds like that's what continued to move you forward and yes. continue to do that today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was fuel. And I'd write these songs and my husband was like, this is the first time I've ever heard you sing something that sounds like you. Mm -hmm. Best this, compliment ever. I know. Like, this is the most you I've ever heard you write. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's like, what? It was amazing. And like, I have one song that like just makes him cry every time that I play it. I have a song called Wait and the chorus is maybe it's okay if it doesn't look the way they said it, it did. Maybe it's okay and don't give up just yet. Wait. And like he, it's so funny. When I was in the songwriting class, my cousin committed suicide and I wanted to write a song about I wanted to write a song that would like save somebody like mm -hmm. I, like so desperately like I was trying so hard to force this song to to exist mm -hmm. that would just like help people in that most desperate time of their lives mm -hmm. and I tried so hard to force it and I wrote this song and it just was it just fell flat and I tried so hard to just just force it and that was what the class that was what this mentor like really helped me to see was that I can't force anything and that when I let it happen, when I when I let the inspiration hit, when I let myself be guided mm -hmm. by by God, that's when I can do things that are magical. And mm -hmm. so I wrote this song called Wait and like my husband told me that like it actually like helped him when he was feeling suicidal and it actually like changed his life. And this is my husband who is my harshest critic like honestly he's a bigger critic of me than i am i actually tend to go on the other side i i tend to think that everything i do is like super amazing and i have to balance the like realistic and keep my hopes up when i discover that maybe it could actually be better mm -hmm. and so i went through this class and i learned so much about like letting it be letting it breathe letting it like don't rush the music is what she'd say to me and yet at the same time, I was like, I'm going to have my whole 10 song album done, you know, in six months. And then mm -hmm. it didn't quite make it. And I was like, okay, how about a year? And everyone else in my class was like, okay, I've got one song, maybe a second one I've started. But like at the end of this year, it was like they have one single released. And I'm like, okay, I've got 10 songs and they're ready. <laughs> and I got to, so September of 2022 was a year mm -hmm. from me starting that class. And I was like, I'm going to have all my songs ready it's going to be a thing. Like everything's ready to go. I'm ready to release all my songs. I started releasing singles in April and I released one single a month and was ready to release the whole album in September. And I finished a song. What's really funny is the song is called, I keep fighting. And the chorus goes, I keep fighting, but I just can't win. The blows mm -hmm. keep coming again and again and again. And I finally finished the song and I was 
over the moon about it. I was like, this is it. Like, this is the best I've ever written. Like, this is so good. And I played it for my husband and I was like, his response to my song, like, just broke me apart. And he was like, you can't release this yet. Mm -hmm. This deserves live instruments. Mm -hmm. This deserves more than your current, like, ability to comprehend. And so then I cried for like three days. <laughs> like because, a grieving process. Right. And I was like, there goes the last few pieces of, of old Carolee. Like mm. just being broken away. Yeah. And I was like, because up to this point, like I had learned so, so much. Like I was producing my own full scores on GarageBand. And like I learned what EQ was and how to use it. And I learned all of these like nitty gritty technical things mm -hmm. of how to do this. But I knew he was right. I knew it needed live instruments. And it was painful to get rid of that cognitive dissonance of mm -hmm. like, but this is amazing and I want to share it with the world now. And the, but it could be better and it deserves better. Like it is so good that it deserves to be elevated beyond what I'm currently able to do mm -hmm. on my own. Oh, because one of the things that I've always struggled with is I want to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. I want to get it all done by, by myself. I don't want to collaborate with people because I have kind of felt like I can't rely on anyone else to just like have that same drive and to get it done as fast as I want, right? And maybe even the way that I want. And I had to like push that whole prideful ego part of myself aside and go, okay, I know that there are people who know more than I do. Mm -hmm. I know it. And this whole time I'd been thinking like, I don't know anybody to collaborate with. I can't really like afford to just go out and hire a bunch of people. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, if this is supposed to happen, like, you know, Lord, just let it happen. Like mm -hmm. push it into my life because I see no way forward. And it was really such an amazing like turn of events that right at that same time, when I had finished the song and I was ready to release it and this whole thing happened with my husband and he's going, no, just wait. And my coach was telling me, don't rush it, mm. let it breathe. <laughs> and I'm going, just I want to force this to happen still. My parents friend posted on Facebook and shared his son's music. Mm. And this is something like I recognized his name, but I didn't really know him well. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to go support another artist because I know exactly what this is like and he like had his song on band camp and I went and listened to it and it's like not super like it's ska so it's not like my my music I consider it like theatrical pop like it's mm -hmm. definitely like like I'm classically trained so it's definitely got like that kind of vibe I'm, I don't have exactly the most like gritty pop voice but I'm trying to do pop so his ska style was like very very different from like <laughs> what I do and it didn't have any vocals. It was all instruments. And it was just like this huge instrumental layered piece. And I went and listened to it. And I was like, I want to support other artists. And so I bought his song. And he reached out to me and was mm. like, thank you for buying my song. What? And, and like, let's, and we started this conversation. And he went and listened to my music. And he's like, you know, I play like 20 instruments. Wow. I can play all of this for you. Oh, wow. I can I can help elevate your songs a little because even though my songs sound great, like there's only so much I can do on GarageBand with MIDI guitar files. Mm -hmm. Like there's just some things that have to be done live. And I'm sitting here like, I don't play any instruments. Like I don't. And like it was just divine like, timing. Just divine timing. And so I sent him. I keep fighting and I was like, all right, I just finished this song. Like, let's see what you can do with it. Mm. And he sent it back to me a couple of days later and I hated it. <laughs> I loathed what he did. Like I hated it. Like my initial reaction was like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. And I played it for my husband and he was like, oh, this is so great. He made it so much better. And I'm like, no, no, this is terrible. And I realized that like, I really, 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 in my entire life, across everything I do ever, when I have that reaction, I need to step back and I need to let it sit and process for a few days before I really react because my initial reaction tends to be really prideful. Mm -hmm. It tends to be really like, 
like it's so different this can't possibly be good and I got to a point where I played like the version I sent him and I played his version and I was like oh they're actually not that different Mm. oh they're actually really similar like oh he actually didn't change as much as I thought he did and a big part of the like things that I hated about it was just the mix Mm. like it was just like really simple like like just mixing tweaks like I felt like the vocals should be a little louder and the drums should be less loud and like change and and so I asked him to change a couple things on it and he did and it was like that was it (laughs) oh I see how this works and what was really another like like element to this whole story because not because I'm writing all this music and I'm learning all these things and I'm taking all these classes and I'm like deep diving into like my own self and Mm. music and all this all while I've got three kids with autism Mm. and like my youngest is having all these issues at school and throwing desks and having all this like just awful behavior and trying to move into a different school and like like my life is just naturally like insane Mm. like with if you take out all of me (laughs) like you take out all of the things I'm passionate about and you just have my kids and my husband (laughs) like my life's chaotic Mm. and crazy and so it took a lot to step back and to take those moments that I had to like be at peace for a minute and go the direction I felt inspired to go and so this has been like a really huge like learning curve and process and one of the things at the very very beginning so about a year ago as I started taking this class I started feeling like I should start a podcast Mm -hmm. and I heard Kathy's course and I was like this is like at the same time that I'm deep diving into myself and doing all this work with the music and I'm like, I should start a podcast. And it's just sometimes things happen where you're just like, I feel so strongly about this that mm-hmm. I have to do it like now. And I actually just got like a notification from Anchor that my podcast has officially been out a year. So that's crazy. Congratulations. Uh, so as I was my very, very first song that I wrote for my album that's going to come out. So yeah, so I decided to like not release my album in September and to let it breathe. Mm-hmm. And I will probably really be releasing it in about February ish which was a really hard pill for me to swallow (laughs) like I was so determined to like make it happen in September Mm -hmm. and to let it breathe and like be okay with that I'm okay with it now but it took it was a lot of like heartache to get there Mm -hmm. so I started my podcast and I was like what like what do I have to teach people like what do I have to talk about I don't feel like I'm like a success in music like I certainly don't feel like that's a category but how do I transform this life of utter chaos into something that is beneficial for people and it took a long time to get the words right but it finally like you know it just it just comes Mm -hmm. it just comes by inspiration when it's supposed to and you just have to wait for that and so it's called seeking sunshine Mm -hmm. and I used that as like a motivation to write my song, Seeking Sunshine, which is my first single that I released Mm. back in April. And I came, I had this demo version of the song that was the intro to my podcast initially. It took a long time to like really like understand the song and grow it into like what it has become, which for the record, the single that is released is a shadow of the version that's going to come out on the Mm -hmm. album because what happened was like I I had Seeking Sunshine and I built it up and I did my podcast and the whole like premise is finding something positive Mm -hmm. in the chaos and the trials that we go through because I have constant examples of like things just going crazy in my life and I love talking to other people about you know their really hard stories and how they were able to get through it and it's super inspirational to hear from all these people so I was trying to balance my podcast and do the music and I made it to like episode 13 like 13 weeks into my podcast I made it to like March and then like album mode switched on and I like stopped doing my podcast and I was like you know I'll get back to it at some point but like I really want to force my album out there which again is the problem trying to force (laughs) and I worked really hard on my album and didn't really work on my podcast and then summer hit and I was like this is just impossible with my kids home like somehow like you would think that like 
I don't know, school ending and you're like, oh, freedom, summer. No, it was like so much more stuff. And then my kids started school and I was like, yay, I'm going to be home and I can like get stuff done without my kids. And it's been like, nope, I'm rarely home. Like squeezing my podcast into these Mm -hmm. times has been difficult, but I got re-inspired. And like about that same time that like my album was crashed down around me and I couldn't release it in September I was like okay I'm gonna restart my podcast Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the album breathe with somebody else while I focus on the podcast and it's been like a huge blessing I think I'm like six episodes out now since like pausing for six months and it's been a fun like thing to focus on like that service Mm. aspect and, and just letting things happen instead Mm -hmm. of forcing it and one thing that's been like super incredible I actually like lost the file for my Seeking Sunshine song like the garage band file got accidentally deleted oh wow remember I have like a super super old it's a 20 early 2015 (laughs) MacBook that I'm working on and it never has enough storage space and it's like always a thing and I lost this file and it was like okay well that sucks I don't know I I don't know that I'm ever gonna have the time to like rebuild this song Mm -hmm. like I don't even remember I don't have the skills to listen to it and rebuild it Mm -hmm. like like I'm gonna try but like I just was really feeling like I didn't have those skills and so after my friend finished I keep fighting I was like I've got a real challenge for you Mm -hmm. and I sent him Seeking Sunshine and I was like can you rebuild this like, can you do this? And he took, and it only took him like a week. Wow. <laughs> he took on this challenge. And when I got his demo version back, which is like not even the like finished product, but like the, the demo version, he's going, I've got all these other things I want to do on it. But here's like a basic thing. My mind was blown. Like mm. I almost just like sobbed on oh, this the album. The story is so <laughs> inspirational because you're taking us through the peaks and valley of being a creator because literally what you're doing is creating something out of nothing. Having this vision that is so big, but also holding it so close and then coming to a place where you were open enough and expanded enough to be like, I'm going to let it be great. I'm going to release control and watching the magic yeah. happen right in front of you. Like what a beautiful journey. What a beautiful <laughs> story. And that just the thing I feel like I must say is you have to get support. We can't do it alone. We were never meant to do it alone. We were created to need people, to need the connection, to need inspiration. And so that is like my biggest takeaway from this is you don't have to do this alone. You're not alone in motherhood and building your business and building up yourself, like get that support that you need. And something that's really amazing, like I feel like I should have known this because as a mom with special needs kids, like I have had no qualms about Mm. going out and getting support. Like in every other area, I'm like, yes, therapies, all the therapies. I I would love all the support. Like I've taken so many parenting classes, like help me be a better mother. Help Mm. me learn all of these things. One of the things that I did when I was in college was I wrote a research paper on the DSM-5, which is how you diagnose autism and like how much I learned from that and how much it helped me to understand my children better. Mm -hmm. And I was not afraid to grow in all these ways and to reach out. And, but when it came to like my own Mm -hmm. personal things, like when it came to my kids, I was like, of course, Mm -hmm. like we're going to get every therapy in the books, Mm -hmm. but we're going to do our best. And We actually came to a point where like we had too many things and we had to narrow Mm -hmm. it down because it was just overwhelming. But like we're going to get all the options. We're going to do all of the things because they are worth it. But I didn't think I was worth it. I didn't think that I was talented enough to work with other people on my music. Like I didn't think that I was enough, but my kids were enough. And so like now that I look at it, I'm like, oh, of course I'm also enough. Like we never stop learning and growing. And what was really kind of fun about like graduating college and going, okay, I no longer am sitting here. Like when I added my second major, it was like, oh my gosh, this is where I belong in college. And I just loved it. And I thrived in there. Mm -hmm. I hated statistics and I hated research and I hated like, okay, I'm going to do this thing that's costing all this money. And none of this is like stuff I even really feel like I don't really like any of this. And so now that I've graduated, it's like, oh, I can still learn at that Mm -hmm. level. I can still 
I can still do that. Like I can still continue to grow Mm -hmm. and expand my soul, but now I'm guiding it. And that just seems so much more powerful than like learning statistics. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I hated statistics. Right. And you're in control, like you're in control, but also you're letting go of control. Yeah. It's completely letting go in a way that is like the divine timing and the divine path. Look around, see what else is available to me like finally (laughs) like I don't think I was doing that before like when my kids were younger and it was just like so difficult I was so like this is just how it has to be and like to open myself up to the possibilities and I feel like every day I like become more and more aware and more Mm -hmm. open of like everything that's out there like there is so much knowledge and joy to be gained and to inspire us in this life and all we have to do is look for it and we'll find it it's so true it's so true like you are speaking to my soul (laughs) and as you're speaking I'm getting goosebumps because it's it's the journey of life and your seeking sunshine is life is you get that choice to look for the good And when you keep looking for the good, you expand it and you see more good, which is the possibilities you're speaking of. And so thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for taking us on your journey and being so vulnerable and so open in the process. It's going to help so many people that are listening to this, so many beautiful moms. And I would love them to know where they can listen to these demos that are only going to get so much better for you because yeah, you're so lit up and you're so fired up about it that it, it got me and I know the listeners fired up as well. So how can we support you? Well, thank you. Everything's at caroleegarrison.com. I have one last question. In the being part, because that is how magic happens. I've been hearing this for so long that we can just be and allow it to happen, especially as women, because that's where we thrive. We are the, we are the creators. We are the manifestors. We are that. And the men, the masculine energies, the doing, the going, the forcing. So how did you claim your mass or your feminine energy and release that masculine energy of doing to get to the place where you were able to sit and surrender? You know, it's something I'm still really working on a lot, but it is so important. The, the recognition that like you don't accomplish more by doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it sounds so like so much like an oxymoron, like it doesn't it doesn't make super logical sense, but I can't overemphasize the importance of like allowing yourself to just like sit in silence with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like that's when inspiration comes, Mm -hmm. like pretty much always. Like Mm -hmm. I I started realizing that like all of my song ideas came in the shower. Mm -hmm. That was the (laughs) only time a day where I wasn't multitasking. I wasn't trying to do like 20 things at once and my brain was like my brain finally just was like, relaxed. Yeah. Relaxed. Yeah. And it was like, oh, maybe there's something to that. Maybe I should try to add that to more of my life. And I mm. recognized not too long ago, even that I was afraid to sit with my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like I was afraid of silence. Like, what did it mean if I was sitting still? Well, obviously it meant that I was lazy and wasn't accomplishing things and wasn't going and wasn't doing and I could be doing more and no, like, no, like that's all fake. (laughs) None of that's real. (laughs) It turns out, you know, I've spent my whole life going, 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 going. And it's Mm -hmm. not until I stopped and just like let silence happen. And it's, and like I said, I'm still learning this. Mm -hmm. This is something that I have to remember consciously and make an effort to like take time for every day and sometimes I don't and then I try to do better the next day and I don't sit and like blame myself like how can you receive inspiration if you don't take the time to listen it's around you how can you feel the love of God if you don't sit and listen for it how did you overcome that fear part I feel like I said last question but that fear part that you are speaking about is so I mean, it's so true for all of us, even when I started sitting with myself and getting to know myself and welcoming myself home and embracing all the parts of me and giving them so much grace and love and compassion, there was that moment of like, but if I sit still, what am I going to hear? And I don't want to, and that fear part, right? So how did you for yourself overcome that fear? Is it just by the doing it and making yourself know that you're going to be okay? Or did you have a process? 
kind of and and again i'm still i'm still working on it i'm Mm -hmm. still exploring it my fear was specifically that i wasn't doing enough Mm -hmm. that if i stop for a minute that means that i am not doing all that i can Mm -hmm. right like does that i feel like that translates to like everybody Mm -hmm. like if i sit still it means that i didn't do my best Mm -hmm. to get everything done because there's always going to be too much to get done in a day than you can actually do Mm -hmm. i feel like like the dishes and the laundry and the vacuuming and the I should be, you know, dusting the fans. Like that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Like there's all of these things, that, you know, the shoulds. But like throw the shoulds away. And like one of the people that I interviewed on my podcast had this really great thing that she said. She turns her entire to-do list and looks at the values mm-hmm. that she has that are associated with the things she's doing. So when mm-hmm. she's doing the dishes, it's not just like this begrudging thing that she hates it's I value having my house clean Mm -hmm. and so it changes it from like being this dreadful chore into something I value so Mm -hmm. as you prioritize yourself and your values then that silence becomes more important Mm -hmm. and it helps you get through your whole day like if you Mm -hmm. start your day in chaos then you're gonna feel chaotic inside as you go through the day but if you start your day in peace Mm -hmm. that's going to carry and if something happens to upset that then it's more of a blip Mm -hmm. than a constant like snowball effect that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger yeah absolutely one of the things like i had this really and i'll share this This is actually the first time i've ever shared this so it's a big deal for me Mm -hmm. um had this breathing technique Mm -hmm. it's kind of incredible that I had decided a month ago or so, I was like, I feel like I want to write a book and I'm this really type A go, go, go. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm just going to like, let it come as it Mm -hmm. comes. And I was just about to fall asleep. And this just inspiration just hit me of this breathing technique. Now, my husband has severe anxiety and PTSD and my kids all have anxiety. It kind of all gets rolled up with autism. And so like panic attacks and being stressed out. And I definitely, you know, feel that a lot that like, we're going to be late. Here's my high level of stress. And when you just get that like elevated heart rate and you're just like, ah, like, like really, 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 really like your heart is just thumping and you're just like, I can't, how do you get down from that? And so this breathing technique came to me and I I guess I could call it, I'm not sure about this name, but like a five by five by five. Mm. So you start with one and you inhale one for one second. And you exhale for one second and you do it one time. And then you inhale for two seconds and you exhale for two seconds and you do it twice. And then you inhale for three seconds and you exhale for three seconds and you do it three times and then you do four and then you do five. And by the time you get to five, you've gone mm-hmm. from crazy strung up, In like head. losing my mind to almost asleep. Oh, back to your body, mm-hmm. back to the ground, centered. Oh, I can handle life now everything's going to be okay. Mm. And so anyways, I, I, I love sharing that because I hope that it can help somebody. Oh, absolutely. you're like in that moment and you're like, how do I get out of this? Because I feel like I can't think. Absolutely. Something about focusing on just counting because mm-hmm. you're using your fingers because you're counting, like you're counting breaths in your head, mm-hmm. but you're also counting how many rounds you've done. And like that just takes you out of the panic. It takes you out of the... I don't know what to do. My life's crazy. I don't like what's happening. And just bring, yeah, it grounds you. It brings you yeah. back to yourself. And it just brings this overwhelming feeling of like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Oh, thank you for sharing that with us. You're because welcome. it's true. We all need tools in our toolbox. And my toolbox just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I love more tools because <laughs> it means more ways to heal myself, more ways to take control of myself, more ways to go within and know that I can do the thing. Right. And so thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you for this beautiful conversation. And I, yeah, I just am so, so excited to have had this. I love it. Your podcast is amazing. Thank (laughs) you. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. And get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.